My name is Rob Leitzel. I'm here with a movie called Black Bear, directed by Lawrence Michael Levine. I've known Lawrence for almost 10 years at this point, actually. We had worked on a couple of uh, more mumblecore type films in, uh, yeah, about 10 years ago. When Lawrence and I were watching reference films thinking about this movie, we, we were watching a lot of Maurice P. Lott films, Olivier Assayas films, and um, they had a lot of the feel we were looking for. And we kept looking at them and saying, is this 185? What is this? And I just realized at a certain point, we're like, oh, all of these movies are 165. And that's a different, different framing, different composition, but also I think subconsciously uh, uh, gives you a different feel, a different nod. It seems a little more timeless, a little bit harder to place. And I thought that was right for this film, not, not kind of rooting it in something that was as expected. On this film, actually, I was coming off another movie that I'd been doing with my wife in Cambodia. And it meant that and by the time I got back and Black Bear was going, pre-production was really, really tight for me. I think we had, uh, maybe I had a total of two weeks, but that also meant, because our location was six hours north of New York, I had a week in New York City, but in that week, I'd never seen the house. We didn't really have great stills or floor plans or anything, so I had two weeks, but a week of it was in a pretty dark, uh, mindset and then it had to come together very very quickly and for me the trade-off with that was that I was able to live on location so Larry the director and I were in the house we were shooting in for all of prep and all of production and could wake up before call and walk around and think oh yeah yeah I think we had this plan does that still make sense I don't know let's walk around there's nobody here we could walk around we can figure it out and and that kind of compensated but prep on this film was much shorter than I usually like to have. For me at this point, when I'm looking at camera and lens selections, I think almost in any situation I shoot on an Alexa of some variety. In this case, it was an Alexa Mini. We had a lot of handheld, it, it made sense. Lens selection, I, I have a much wider variety of lenses that I tend to pick from. And in this case, uh, we ended up going with Cook Speed Pancros for the film in a 165 aspect ratio. You know, I think in, in this case, what I most responded to when I was coming to the film was the cast. And we had, besides a great supporting crew, we had three unbelievably talented actors. And for me as a cinematographer, looking at this script that was really narratively complex, really a lot of emotional, difficult stuff going on in huge scenes, you know, 15, 16 page scenes, what motivated a lot of my choices were just trying to get out of the way of them, give them space to work, find ways to frame and work that uh, let them get as many takes as possible working with each other. That's what motivated me for the most part in terms of how I was thinking about the cinematic language. I think that that you know, carries into other ways and, and you end up feeling that and, and it I'm sure ends up speaking to the kind of meta narrative of the film, but for me, more than anything else, I wanted to make it look nice, I wanted to make it feel nice. You know, we had ideas about the language of the film, but more than anything, it was getting there, seeing what they were doing, and, and seeing what felt appropriate for that scene. On this film, we had such a limited crew, uh, very limited housing, we didn't carry a proper DIT. I had a media manager and the like, but all of the kind of look and, and LUT selection was uh, done by me. And we did monitor a, a LUT on set. It changed around a little bit, but uh, my gaffer is really experienced and very talented, and, and he sort of knew what it meant, what it, you know, where it was going, and, and how we could push it. And then I carried that LUT into into post. We had a, a really amazing colorist, and she took it. She looked at it, and I said, "Yeah, I was looking at this LUT, but here's my references. Here's where I was sort of going with that. Does that make sense?" And she said. Mm. Kind of, sure, and then picked and choose and, and put something together that was a look for me for the rest of the film. The bigger, the bigger challenge for me was, again, in this two-part structure. We knew we wanted it to be a little distinct, but it was also really important that when the film moves into the second half, it's not immediately clear that anything's changed. I, I didn't want it to be incredibly obvious that it was a two-part structure. So finding a LUT that could work for the first part of the movie and then figuring out how to subtly shift it as we went into the second part of the movie. We, we changed our ISO a little bit, we changed the look a little bit, we changed the grain structure. We made these little changes that we could kind of implement slowly as we get into the second half. But finding something that worked for both halves pretty well and felt unified but still had directions to have them each have their own little bit of a feel, that was a pretty tricky nuance process for me.
it was an interesting challenge for this film again because I wasn't able to go and and do a proper tech scout until we were a week away from shooting. I'd never even director scouted it. So because this house was also off grid, none of us really knew what the power situation was there, which is fine for, you know, we can bring in our own Jenny Short, but we were also concerned about, well, there's also 30 people here trying to keep production going in a house. Are we powering everything? Are we powering just our lights? How is this going to work? So when I was looking at the package, I thought the safest strategy for us was as many LED units, as many low draw, low amp units as possible, the better off we'd be. So we had a, a fair, we must have had a half dozen sizes of light mass and stuff like that around. I carry a package of some small LED units that I like to use, quasar tubes and, and things like that. And then uh, actually one of the one of the big things for us was that my, my gaffer, who's a very experienced uh, commercial uh, gaffer, really talented beauty work guy, and he brought in a, a pack that he owns of Astera tubes, and I'd never used those on a narrative project. They tend to be so expensive and annoying for that that they don't come, but on this film, having eight Astera tubes that we could fly around in a house where the power was iffy, we were having blackout, having units that were battery powered, that were remote, that was a big deal for me. And it also gave me the capacity, because he was so talented and, and so experienced with these units, being able to have him also sit there and do a little bit of wireless dimming uh, as we're in these long takes. If I'm spinning through the house, going from one side of the room to the other, we could talk a little bit in advance and say, you know, if I'm going this way, let's bring this unit up to here, let's bring this down. If I'm turning this way, we can do kind of a 10 second fade to this look. And he was able to sit there on monitor and dial in these looks as the take was going on. And there's no way that I could have accomplished the movie, at least with the level of visual finesse we wanted if he hadn't been there with this kind of pretty amazing modern technology behind us. It's remarkably exciting to work with Actors as talented as we had, a, a crew, a lot of great department heads, everyone was really wonderful, and an amazingly talented writer-director. It's nice to then have that all come together and see the movie and say, oh, this is fantastic. Like, I, you know, not like, oh, we tried hard, we did our best, look, there's some good stuff, there's some bad stuff, what are you going to do? Filmmaking is pretty hard. This movie, you watch, especially watching with an audience, and for me as a cinematographer, it's... Yeah, it's lovely. I'm happy with, with huge swaths of the film and the work that we did, but also feeling like I've helped get that movie across and that I've helped all of the work I did to try to protect performance, give them chances to work with each other, all of that stuff. When you then see it on the screen, you think, oh yeah, this is really moving. There's people in the audience crying, there's people laughing, people are you know, white knuckling their chairs. When you see that all of that work was actually um, successful, it's, it's uh, for me the kind of the highest compliment that, that I can feel is feeling that I helped kind of unify and, and bring that together as a film. Mm -hmm.